Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's review how absolute zero was determined and it points to the equation as we know as the ideal gas equation which is PV equals nRT where for a gas P stands for the pressure, V is the volume, T is the temperature, N is the number of moles and R is the gas constant. So we can set up two devices, one that's called a constant volume thermometer where the volume of the gas doesn't change but the pressure changes and one where we have a constant pressure thermometer where the pressure doesn't change but the volume changes. And so what we can do is we can use these two thermometers in this case to measure the pressure at 100 degrees Celsius and the pressure at 0 degrees Celsius. The different curves depending upon how much gas you have in that particular container that remains that constant volume and what type of gas you're using. And over here we have what we call a constant pressure thermometer where the pressure remain, remains the same but the volume is allowed to change and so we measure the volume and I should write that down over here so the volume versus temperature and so we measure the volume at 100 degrees Celsius and the volume at 0 degrees Celsius and then if we extrapolate these curves out since they're simply straight lines we notice that all these lines converge to a single point on the horizontal temperature scale that single point then represents 0 Kelvin because Obviously, we can't have a gas go all the way down to zero because the gas would converge into a liquid and then would turn into a solid. So you, it wouldn't actually work in real life. But if you just simply extrapolate out those lines, you'll find that that is how absolute zero was determined. Um, very clever, the use of the ideal gas equation and these two nifty devices where the volume is kept constant or the, the pressure is kept constant. And that's how we determine absolute zero.